Gold price hits a record high, $2,500 an ounce, driven by Western investors positioning for U.S. interest rate cuts and boosted by a a flurry of institutional investment and bullish hedge uh, fund bets. The surge added more than 100 tons in bullish bets on the Chicago complex market in just one week. Holding and physically backed gold ETF have increased by 90.4 tons, worth $7.3 billion since May, with uh, net inflows positive in seven and eight weeks as Western investors wake up to what Asia has been tracking earlier this year. And Tom, so this is all conversations around rate cuts. Nearly 90 billion pours into U.S. money markets funds ahead of expected rate cuts. Everything is rate cuts. Unemployment is the Fed's biggest enemy now, Powell says, not inflation. So Powell said something, okay, about what he's going to be doing. They're saying four or five rate cuts between now and end of 2025. How many rate cuts does it mean this year, Tom? Has he clearly come out and said what they're going to do this year? He has clearly come out and said, we're going to see a rate cut in September. And he's clearly indicated that it's a nominal level. When he says nominal, he means a quarter point. Right now, I think the 30-year mortgage is six and a quarter to six and a half, which is, which is a full point and a half down from the eight percent that it touched last year. So this is good. People that are refining right now uh, on a typical mortgage are getting about a $500 relief pad. Imagine if you get a $500 relief per month on your payment, that's six grand a year. That's $8,500 pre-tax. That's real relief for people that are able to refi right now. And that should go down to 6.0 to six and a quarter by the end of the year. So we may see highly qualified individuals get like a 5.875 mortgage by the end of December, but it's one cut this year of a quarter unless unemployment really pops and then he'll make one more cut in November. But if it stays where it is with the economy right now, we expect one cut now and then next year, approximately a cut per quarter. There's your four cuts. Now, what's really interesting is what have we been saying is the issue with housing prices, not enough for sale or keeping the price up, right? I have a chart. I dove into this. I want to know how have the home builders been responding this year? Not this one, Rob. Yep. Uh, it's, no, no, no. The one I... No, he t- he was, it was in a group text this morning. The one you're talking about yep. in, the, in the PBD podcast yep. uh, group text? Yep. So it's the... It's What's the, it showing, Tom? What does it say? What it was showing was the home builder ETF has just now, with the stock market, yep. crossed over 100% up. So you've made, so if you put $100 in, you come back to, um, you know, I think it was a- Right there, Tom, he has it. Go for it. Yeah, so well, th- this has to do with the housing bubble, but right now the, the stock index for the um, home builders is up 100% year over year. So if you put $100 last year into the ETF that covered home builders like DR Horton, Toll Brothers, Lanier, KB Home, Pulte, and we know- we know a guy. Yep. Um, all of those together are in like a little ETF, and it's up a hundred percent, you know, year over year, which means home builders are doing well and they're building supply. And so right now, there's going to be some relief in home prices next year coming along with those cuts from next year, but. It'll happen faster if unemployment jumps past the 4.3, 4.4% right now. So if you're refining right now, you got some good news coming between now and the end of the year. Um, and home builders are continuing to build, but it's going to take them another year to really get that supply in to help bring prices down unless you have like a real economic tremor that artificially brings them, not artificially, but that kind of crashes the market. And, and by the way, Rob, can you pull up the Bloomberg story I texted you this morning? Well, watch this here, Tom, which is absolutely wild. A $557 billion drop a drop in office values eclipses a revival of cities. Steve Avetian texted me this uh, first thing in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning, whatever where he's at. Yeah, the MJ of Glendale. So <laughs> let me just read it. No, he literally Steve. is that guy. But let me read this to you. Point guard. So the sun splash streets of L.A. So it's going through the whole thing about what's going on. The uh, uh, names of the stars, CAA, all this stuff. Keep going lower. Keep going lower. Keep going lower. He's going to give a name right there. Uh, check this out. It's a starkly different scene 10 miles to the east in L.A. downtown core. Buildings are losing tenants and going into foreclosure. With the area's biggest commercial landlord and affiliate of Brookfield Corp. We know Brookfield, Tom. They just bought Anico. 
American National. It's an mm. insurance company that they just bought. Start squeezing it. Yeah, let me continue reading that, Rob. And a field of uh, uh, Brookfield defaulting on $2.2 billion of mortgages since last year. Ten camps dot the streets in the uh, epicenter of the city's homelessness crisis. Oceanwide Plaza, a graffiti-covered project abandoned by a Chinese developer, is headed for bankruptcy auction in September. If you go a little lower, look at those. Look at those buildings, by the way. That's embarrassing what's going on over there. Keep going lower, Rob. I want to read the one chart. If you can show, zoom in on that chart. Look at this chart, by the way. This is core business districts, how they're being hit versus outlying areas, Okay. If you go to 2016, look where it was. Office prices plunged 52% from its peak. Okay, 52% from its peak. The peak is what year you want to put the peak? 22, Rob? Okay, let's just say 22. Yeah, the bounce out of COVID. Look, and the suburbs are how much lower? 40%, 37% less, right? Then all of a sudden, now go to today. Look at the flip right there. Suburbs are now selling, have a... You have dropped the, the the value they've maintained over actual major cities. And even if you go a little lower, the additional stats, it tells you about who else has stopped. This Bloomberg thing is really, Rob, what it's telling you is either freaking claim the offer or get <laughs> off get the site. That's what it's telling you. Office rents have grown more slowly in central districts, changing uh, asking rents from start of 2018 through the first quarter of 2024. New York Financial District, uh, Plaza South, minus 4%. The main office district, outer area, <laughs> 27%. Same with Seattle, same with Dallas, same with downtown LA, and same with Miami. Tom, what, what do you think is causing this? Is this getting smaller businesses or even bigger companies to say, like, we can keep a fancy building, like even Goldman Sachs, the building we got a tour in, right? Beautiful building. New York. Right next door to the... The brand new World Trade, number one World Trade Center. That's right. Beautiful building right next to you. You're sitting looking outside the office. You're looking at the World Trade Center, right? Yeah, but, and yeah. then now they're building in Dallas. So you're seeing a lot of companies saying, I need an office in Miami just to say we're in Miami, but we're getting really an office 20 miles outside of Miami. I need an office in downtown just to say we're in downtown, but we're really going to get an office 20 miles outside of that. Do you think this trend is going to continue or do you think it's going to go back to being the downtown model? The trend will continue, and this is what's going on. Where are those home builders building homes? In outlying areas. So more home supply means workers are finding homes further from downtown. That doesn't mean the boonies, to use a word. For instance, Buckhead is thriving. Downtown Atlanta is, is squeezed, that chart you just show. Galleria area, where we used to live, mm -hmm. like two miles from that, thriving. And downtown Dallas was also thriving, but Dallas was kind of an exception. But that's exactly the dynamic you're seeing. You're seeing these main old downtowns, some of which have been revitalized, but it takes people forever to move down there. If you have a family, you don't have a condo downtown. You don't live in a, a cool apartment downtown. You live outbound where you get schools and other services and things like that. And so this is the commercial real estate is directly related to work from home when where and where the homes are. And and where the workers can afford to buy a place to live. That's what's happening. And if you're if you're young and single like Adam, you could live downtown and work in Brickle. Thanks, thanks Tom. But if, if Adam had two kids, where would you we'll do this test. Even Tom, though my kids out of your Okay, I'll leave my kids out. Adam of it, having Tom. two kids. No, but if Adam Stop. had two kids, kids Tom probably not gonna live there. See what you just did, right? It was going smooth <laughs> until that get this personal, you just made. Tom. But man, what we, what's so, happening here, bro? So no, so but if Adam was living in Dallas and had a couple kids. I would only live in Addison. Stop. You would. You know what? Addison is the outlying area yeah. right there by Galleria, and you'd have schools, services, and beautiful shiny Radio offices to, halt, to, to call <laughs> your best. own. But that, that's, that's what's going on. Well, this is look, related to the home building, and it's related to work from home. And remember, what have companies been doing? Closing offices and squeezing costs for two years, which has led to the S&P 500 one third of its run up, they say, is cost savings and efficiency. So you do have a BET voice. Did you see what yeah. just happened at the top? Doing, so girl? what have they been doing? They have been. Did you hear that voice? That's how he talks to Kim. I was, trying, that night. I was trying hey, to be less. We got to be PG 13, Tom. Right. Don't go there. Go ahead, Adam. The cheerleader. Tell us. The biz dog babe is chill. Well, look, Pat. You she, know likes, she likes the voice. <laughs> You know, I'm a team player. You know, I read the book, Barbarians and Bureaucrats. Yep. Here's what I'm willing to do for you. Let's hear it. I'm willing to be a barbarian. 
I'm willing to Oof. be a I'm willing to be a flag carrier. Yeah. I'm willing to no, you're not. Be the guy no, you're not. to move down to Miami, Miami. and set up yeah. shop and open up our Miami office. It, I will carry that are. burden. And I don't, it's a scarlet letter a on my honorable. chest. I don't want to do this, yeah. but I'll only do it for you. But we can, we can potentially talk about that. But, you know, you guys, Tom did a great job of sort of discussing sort of the macroeconomics of, of the reality here. Is, you know, on, on my side, I handle a little bit more personal finance. I don't hear the average everyday person running around being like, hey, you hear Jerome Pally's? I think he might be making four cuts next year. I don't know. What do you think, buddy? They have no clue the difference between a Fed fund rate and a target rate and a prime rate. They got no clue. They just know that they're living paycheck to paycheck and they're just looking for a better economic situation here in America because 50% of the people in, in America don't invest in the stock market. But if you're of the other 50%, don't look now, but you're probably richer than you've ever been. I certainly am. The stock market was up what last year, Tom? 24%. If you look at the S&P this year, I think it's closer to 20%. So if you're playing the market, life's pretty good. If you're playing the crypto game, life's pretty good if you're doing the HODL strategy. So, you know, I remember that you talked about gold as the initial part of this. I'll never forget the first time that I felt, I think it was an ounce of gold. Was it a kilo of gold that you were giving kilo. out? Yeah. Kilo. Okay. Let me tell you something. You think like everyone grab your iPhone right here. Like, all right, it's pretty heavy. It is 10 times as heavy as this. I was like, oh, damn, this is a heavy thing. I think yeah. it was trailing at somewhere around 50 grand in That's 2020. Right. We talked about this yesterday. Okay. Yes. 50K. And I'm like, all right, how well do I know PBD? Do I just make a run for it right now? All right, I'll, I'll, I'm a, so it was like, wow, this, is, and you yeah. remember you were giving them out as like gifts yeah. in like stocking stuffers at PHP, not a bad company to work for. And now it's worth what, 80K? 81K. Okay. You listen, you're the numbers guy. I'm sort of the round, the round numbers guy, but here's the reality. I remember one thing you told me about gold. Gold won't make you rich. It'll keep you rich. But gold is now at an all-time high. If you invested in gold in 2020 when everyone was kind of crashing and people are like kind of scared, you'd actually be doing pretty well right now. What's less the rate of Less than 5%. Gold okay, is something you do less than 5%. But you're, you're uh, making a point. As far as your asset allocation but strategy. But for the longest time, yes. gold hasn't had a positive story. Like this is the first time where gold people can brag a yep. little bit and say, yes, I told you so. I mean, not comparable to crypto or Bitcoin, yes. but they do have an argument well, now. The crypto, the crypto community obviously has been running circles around the gold community and you know, they, there's an yeah. answer for that. But my final point is don't look now, but the economy is actually not doing too bad. You know, unemployment is at what? 4.3%. The target is usually between 3 and 5%. Inflation, I think it's right around 2.93%. There it is, 4.3. Target is between 3 and 5. So it's, you know, you remember it kind of went up a little bit. That's when the market crash happened a few weeks ago mm -hmm. because that was that whole uh, blinking light. But inflation is somewhere around 2.93%. Rob, you can fact check me. Target is 2%. Not bad. And again, the stock market is at all time highs. All right, 2.9%. But the reality is if you're an investor and you have money, life is pretty good for you. If you're a paycheck to paycheck person, you're struggling. And as we talked about guys, earlier, if you guys, it's emotion over rational. The last two minutes that this was a whole statement yeah. to make sure everybody knows mm -hmm. Adam is rich. That's what Adam was. No, saying. no. <laughs> this was listen, this was like, God, listen, I say I, this, uh, I, this. This might be on my tombstone. You ready? Here we go. $150 million ain't what it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what it used to be in Bidenomics and right. in Kamala oh, Harris. Right. So. For 13 and a half years, I know this kind of sounds kind of weird. I've been working on a fiction book. I've never written a fiction book before until now. It's called The Academy. Damn. I've been working on this thing since 2011. Um, it's a story about a kid who gets recruited into a secret society that's been around for a long time that develops the greatest leaders in the world, and you get a chance to go into this vault to learn from different leaders. Imagine having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with people that have been dead for many years, but this technology allows you to have a conversation with them, ask them about any issues that's going on. There's 10 characters in this book. Tupac's one of them. Marilyn Monroe's another one. Who else can I tell you? Ayn Rand's in it. Karl Marx is in this book. There's a lot of mm. tense moments. There's one character in the book that's going to be very controversial. The whole idea for these guys in this book is uh, I've never written a parenting book, but for some of you guys that uh, uh, like a divergent meets Atlas Shrug meets maybe uh, you know those two books, uh, this is a book you're going to enjoy reading specifically if you have kids ages 14 
uh, 14 to 18, as well as adults, you'll enjoy it as well. This comes out next month, September, the Academy. Rob, if you can put the link below, you can go to Amazon to place the order of this book. We'll be talking more about this here. But for those that order early, you'll get your copies. These things sell out fairly quickly. Can I see yes. this thing? Yes, the It Academy. kind of reminds me of the painting, your most famous painting so kind of come to painting, life. painting is the book. Ah, so you'll see some of the sense. conversations that's being had here. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.